Welcome. In this video, we're going to do the exploration tutorial for Bardsung Legend of the Ancient Forge using a solo hero. So down at the table before we jump into this tutorial, this is a role-playing type game, so there is a lot of story to it. So this was the story that led us into the fight in the previous combat tutorial. Basically, we heard of bandits and decided for our conscience we would head out there to see what was going on, and that provoked a fight. And then for this exploration tutorial, one of the hobgoblins was still alive and we gathered some information for a hideout. And now we were are on our way there to take care of the rest of the bandits. So this is gonna go over some of our new cards. So we've got room decks, corridor, battle decks, and challenge decks. We've got those laid out. Basically, whenever we leave a room tile, we're gonna to go to a corridor. And whenever we leave a corridor, we're going to go to a room tile. And depending on the other side of these tiles, we'll basically we'll go ahead and take a look. Um, it's gonna let us know what tile we're using, what aspect card. So this is gonna take the battle one and it's gonna lay out what animals or creatures are coming out there. So these different symbols will point us towards uh, the enemies coming in play. And if there's a circle around it, uh, they will not come in for games with three or less heroes. So those symbols, will be marked in your adventure guide or for this right here. So we're, we're gonna see a brigand and a brute. And if we had more than three, we would be fighting a raider also. For this tutorial, basically what we have to do is we have to explore until we put a tile past this area here. And our only portal we can use is this front one. So taking a closer look at this tile, We've got our steps coming in as one zone, then we have a zone to three different portals on the side. And from best I can tell, this is the line we wanna get that started at in a center position below the logo there. I have brought in uh, my bounding leap. And since we are not in the adventure book that goes over the solo items, I am not gonna be using our additional initiative card. We're gonna have six health or grit instead of the additional plus two and not picking the two squires, even though I've already picked out when we do start this mission, I'll be taking the profit and the apprentice. So without wasting any more time, we're gonna go ahead and jump into this. Uh, we are the only character on the board. So we've got our two actions and then we'll rinse and repeat unless something else pops out. So start with the move, we'll move one spot. Second action, we're going to explore. Like I said, for that explore action, since we're in a room, we're gonna to go towards a corridor. Flip the card over, it's gonna show us our tile, which I've conveniently found already. And we can place this with any entrance as we see fit. So we're gonna have a brute and a brigand come in. So I'll go ahead and put it this direction. Putting the brute in the back and the brigand in the front. And we see we're going for the battle card. So we'll flip this over. Discipline foes. These cunning foes work in pairs, making them far more dangerous. Non-wandering monster enemies add plus one to their target number while they are in the same zone as one or more other enemies. And down at the bottom, it's just letting us know how this card reacts. So for the symbols on the card, the first one there, we have an explanation point is immediate, the text on the card is resolved immediately, then the card is discarded. Next in there, we have what looks like an hourglass. So that's gonna be delayed. Place the card in one of the delay slots at the end of the marching order. Indicated by the hourglass symbol, delayed card state when they resolve the rules, typically during the end phase. Then we have sustained. Card is placed next to the tile indicated in the text. Rules on the card are constantly in effect until the card is discarded or end of the encounter. Then we have engagement, which is also highlighted on this one. Symbol always appears in addition to one of the other symbols above and indicates a card is discarded if all enemy cards are removed from the marching order. So basically stays in effect. So they're gonna get plus one to their target number if they're in a pair. And we always end up inside once we explore in the first room. And since we have two more enemies, that's gonna end the round and we're gonna shuffle. So I'm gonna do my best here having that shuffled and just stop and we are going to go last which is not going to go well for us at all so the brigand's going to go first got his symbol down here so we know he's ferocious he wants to attack a hero in the same zone as his first thing if not 
He wants to charge a hero in an unengaged zone. Oh, well, actually, we are in the same zone. I forgot we moved in there. So he's attacking just from that. And when we defend, we have plus zero. And our target number is a nine for that. So we're looking for nine or better. And we've got a 14. So he did not take damage, and that's going to be his turn. Now the Brute has a different symbol. So on a hit, he's going to do a damage and move us a spot. And on a miss, he's just going to move us back. He's got a movement of two, take six for us to get a critical. He has an ability up here for his toughness. Basically with that symbol there, if we're attacking with a physical attack, which is what we have on our cards, we have to roll at disadvantage. So we're rolling two dice and taking the worst. Once he gets two damage on him, we're going to flip this card over. And just showing his type of card that he's got an ability to flip and the way he's going to activate. And he is disciplined. So he starts out attack a hero in the same zone. He's not in our same zone. And he wants to charge a hero in an engaged zone, which is where we are. So he's coming in after us. And then he's disciplined. This card is disciplined once again. Uh, enemies add plus one to their target number while they're in the same zone as another enemy. So instead of an eight, we need a nine to not take damage from this. And we got a 19, so we're good. But even on a miss, he's going to move us back one space. And I am good with that. This enemy and other enemies in the same zone can't suffer more than one wound from a single attack. Just something to take note of. So he is done. Then back to our turn. All right, so we're going to start with a move. Jump into that space. And interrupt that move for our ride by. Can interrupt a move action to make this attack, then continue their move action. We are going to... Um, let's go after the little guy. We'll go after the brigand. So we actually need a nine to hit him. So rolling here, we got an 11 plus or two. So we've got a 13 on his 10, actually, because he's plus one. Forgot about that. So we hit. Now we need to see if we can crit. Uh, four or better. We did not crit. So basically what we did there is we can move that enemy and we're going to push him back. Then for our second action, we're going to do a cavalry slash on the brute here. And basically that symbol he has is he's physically resilient. Uh, physical attacks against this enemy have disadvantage. So we're rolling two dice and taking the worst. And we've got a six or four plus or two or 15. So we've missed. And we do have a special ability down here. The end of our turn, they may move into an adjacent zone. Now, the way I read this, this allows us to move, whereas a parting blow is all about a move action. So not 100% sure on this, but we're going to say I get to move one space just to use my ability there. That's going to end our turn. And then back to shuffling to see what the new order is going to be. And we'll go ahead and stop and place this out. So we are going first this time. So once again, we're going to do our ride by. We'll start a movement action, then interrupt to do that attack action. We're at disadvantage because of his ability, needing an eight. And we got that dreaded one, so we did not succeed there. So we failed the attack. We're going to attempt to move on now. So this is part of the move action. So we want to continue moving on eight or better. We get out of there and we got a nine. So we continue moving into this spot. And for our second action, we're going to do the slash on the little guy there, needing a nine with our plus two. So our seven or better. And that is a nat 20. So if we had used a fate token, we could replenish it. Um, that is an automatic. When we roll a crit, we've made it through that, the toughness. So we're going to deal him a damage. 
and then choose to push him back this direction. So we are done. Then the brute is gonna go. And third thing on his list is go after an unengaged zone. So he's charging in there on the attack. Our defense, we need an eight, we're plus zero. Um, we did not make it, so we are taking a damage and then being pushed, which kind of works. So we get pushed here and we take one damage. Then the brigand's going to attack us. We need a nine to not take damage from there. We rolled a five. Taking another damage. And we're not feeling the best. So we take our cards, give them a quick shuffle, and go ahead and stop. And we're going last with the brute going first. He actually wants to go into an engaged zone. Now, we're gonna put this side away for a while. Um, we need a nine to not take damage from this hit. We got a nine. So we didn't take damage, but even on the miss, he pushes us back, which we're kind of all right with. And then the brigand's going to charge in. And we need a nine to not take damage from this. We got a one. Not going good. And for our turn, we are going to attack the brigand with our slash. And we're going to empower this attack. So we get the D20 and a D4. And we got a 18, 19, plus or two. So we definitely hit. We can do the crit, it's not gonna matter. We did crit, so we're doing a damage, which is gonna remove him, which means if we were in a campaign, we would gather one coin. And he is out of this battle. Now we're gonna try a ride by, moving in here. Um, at disadvantage, needing an eight. We got a seven plus our two, so that is a hit. Our other one would have been a 20. So we were successful. Now we need to roll a six or better on this. For damage, we got a four. So basically with that, uh, we're just gonna push him one. And we continue our movement, one, two. So that ends your turn. We'll go ahead, it's hard to shuffle too. I'm just gonna say one to three, we're first, four to six, we're second. All right, we're second. Brute is going first. So he's going to basically one, two, he can't get to us, can't attack us in the same zone, no engage zone, can't charge into an unengaged, just goes move towards the closest hero. One, two, he's done. Then we're gonna go, we're gonna start with a ride by. So disadvantage needing an eight. And we got a four plus a six and a nat 20. So we missed on that and we'll just end there with our movement and ride by, then try our cavalry. And we're gonna empower this roll. And I couldn't find in the rules. I'm assuming we can add this to either die when we're rolling at advantage or disadvantage. Uh, it didn't matter. We we're gonna make it with either roll. So then see if we can crit on this. Needing a six or better. Uh, we got a five. So we're just dealing one damage to him, which I'll stack up over here. Then end of the turn, use our band to move a space. And then once again, one to three, we go to first, or attack first, and four to six, roll to three. So we're going first on this one. So we'll start with a rod by. All right, another crit, which doesn't count, but we got a 14, 16, so we hit with the rod by. Um, then see if we get a crit success on a six or better. We did not. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and push back for one, then continue our movement. So we've actually moved two spaces. That'll be relevant here. Empower the attack roll if Glade Strider moved at least two zones during this turn, which we have. So we don't have to spend a token up there. So for our second attack, using the slash now. Oh, it's not going to matter. We rolled a two. We only got a five. All right, so we're done. The Brute's going to attack us now. And we need to beat an eight. Uh, we got a nat 20. Replenish one of those. In turn, same again. One to three, we're going first. We'll be going second. So he's attacking us. We need an eight or better. We got a 15. We're going to use our slash ability and empower it. All right, nat 20, that's not going to count. But over here, we got a 12 plus 4 plus or 2. So we definitely hit. See if we can crit on this. Six or better. We got an 8. So that means he's going to take a damage. So he's got two damage on him now. So we're going to flip this card over. See what changes. His move, it's the same. That number went down. Was a 6, now it's a 4. Now if we get two damage on him, we'll defeat. We'll get two gold. Uh, he's changed his tactics, so now he's ferocious. All right. So that was the damage portion. Now we get to push him. And we will. Then we're going to take a move action to get out of his way. All right. Next turn. Once again... We are going to go first. Oh, his TN went up to 10. We're going to do a ride by. We have a movement of three. One, two, and three. We're at disadvantage because... Nope, he doesn't have the disadvantage anymore. Nice. Just tougher to hit. We're going to spend a fate to empower this roll. So we got a three, four, five, six, seven. So we missed. On the ride by, so now we'll try the slash. Uh, we've moved more than two this turn, so we automatically get the empowered roll. 10, 11, 12, 13. We were successful. Go for our crit. We were not successful there, so we're just dealing one damage. And we are done. Now he's attacking. He's going after us because he doesn't have another option. We did not make the roll, so we're taking a fourth damage. And then initiative order again, seeing where we fall there. Six, we go second, so he's attacking us. We got a one, five damage. We're going to try our slash. Five, six, seven. Not going to hit. Not going good. Now we need move. We're going to try moving out of there. See if we can leave. We need a 10 or better to get out of there. We got a 10. One, two, three. See what happens next round. We're going to be going first. Start with a rod by. One, two, three. Uh, interrupt. Six plus two, not enough. Our slash. Uh, we move so we get the empowerment. Six, ten, eleven, twelve. See if we crit on this one. Uh, we did, uh, but the one more damage on him is going to be enough to take him out. And we would have gotten two more coins. So, tough battle. We are one away from death. Next turn comes to us. We're going to explore into that room. So here we've got a door. And another entrance. 
And that symbol there is where steps out is going to be. So we're going to bring it in this direction. Let me make sure I get my bearings right. And with doors coming in, uh, doors have an open side and a closed side. Doors are always placed on the playing area with the open side showing. And with the door open, I'm just not gonna put a symbol down. We have no monsters coming in, so we are looking at this other aspect card. And we do have steps leading out. But on the bottom of this, See, wounded hobgoblin. Several bandaged hobgoblins lay across the ground, groaning in pain. Place D4 corpse tokens on the current tile, distributed across zones as evenly as possible. The hero moves into the same zone as a corpse token. They make a TN a charisma action roll. They fail, replace the corpse token with the zone with a brigand, and the brigands begin with a wound token. And since all the enemies are gone, this card gets discarded. So we're rolling a D4, and we got a four, that's a problem. There's one in each zone. We're gonna die in this exploration. All right, we moved into that one. So we have to make a charisma check. We failed. In comes a brigand. He does have one damage on him. And with another one coming in, that means we go to shuffling or marching order. I'm still sticking with the low for us to go first. Uh, of course, that's not gonna happen. So this guy's attacking for the kill. And we got a 19, we survived. Well, he went first, so he's done. Now it's our turn. We're gonna start with our slash. Getting a five, so we missed. Then we're gonna to try to retreat. We need a nine to run away from him. We got a 13, so one, two, and three. That's gonna end our turn. See who goes first next. It's gonna be us, sorry. So we ended up there. Uh, so we're gonna move three, one, two, three, interrupt our movement with a ride by, see if we can kill him this way. We got a 12, 14. Uh, we need a crit to actually deal the damage. We did, so we've defeated him. Removes this from the board. We got a coin. Then we're gonna take a move action in here and towards the steps. Make a charisma check to see if that guy's really dead or not. Uh, 10, I believe we're good with a 10. Yep. That's gonna end her round, then her next turn, we take an action to run out the steps. So with us escaping, we have won the tutorial. So that's just the basics of how you go from basically a room to a corridor, from a corridor to a room, and flipping over vent tiles to see what strangeness is gonna happen. Uh, we barely made it out of there. There's, of course, a lot of heroes that would not have been able to succeed with that much damage on them. But we are a melee-only piece. So once we've done that, we can start looking at, after this tutorial, how we actually set up for a game. So in addition to getting fate tokens, we're going to get healing potions, firewood, toolkits, and charms. Uh, basically, this will prevent us from dying if someone goes down. This creates a safe or a save spot in case someone dies, we can start over from a different location. Toolkits help us get through special doors and charms may spend at any time to replenish an exhausted fate token. Uh, vaults just starts explaining about putting cards back in there. Free actions, upgrading our dice. So just moving on, ooh, serious wounds, definitely something bad. Progressing for our next adventure. Um, then explaining more about the end phase. So we have to make an event roll after every turn through our marching order. Through rolls of six, we resolve terrain hazards, and that'll be listed on certain cards. 
the roll fails with a one or two, you'll activate the echo token, uh, which is going to move. Basically, it's wandering monsters coming through the dungeon as we're doing our things. And the maintenance phase for leveling up. So then we'll be moving into the adventure book. We've got our flavor text there. Of course, our contents, setting up. So it talks about choosing our heroes, which I'm sticking with the one I've got. We need to set up our dungeon room challenge aspect and aspect deck. So it tells you what cards to make those with. Uh, talks about our playing area, our reputation track. We will start with that. Certain things will make our reputation go up and down. Uh, scaling for the number of heroes. Since I'm playing with one, we get to choose two squire cards, which I've already chosen. Uh, we get an extra initiative card to be shuffled into the marching order stack. Increase our grit by two, so our grit will be up to eight. Uh, abilities, a uh, hero can be affected by rules that specify other heroes. And when creating the dungeon decks, we're going to take some of those cards out. And with that, as always, hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.